we're talking about a pretty significant report that was just published. And wait, not the Mueller report? Wow, I must really not care about views. If you were on reporting on that, check out literally any other news source. Highlights has a scathing review of Barr's handling of the report in their goofus and gallant cartoon. No, today we're focusing on a different report that just came out, specifically predicting the economic impact of the Trump negotiated trade deal that's currently stalled in Congress. That's right, the North American Trade Agreement Report, the less popular report from this week talking about international traders. Now the super spark notes, oh god I have to understand this report in the next 10 seconds takeaway is Trump's USMCA trade agreement would have a limited but positive impact on the US economy. So it's not exactly a full on gift, but it's definitely an impressively thought out easter egg basket. Hey, topical joke. Today I want to break down the key findings of this report and don't worry, it's 379 pages, so there are plenty of findings. With that, let's get started. We are just getting a report out from the Independent International Trade Commission on the economic impact of the USMCA if it were to pass into law and be put into effect. The ITC finding that the deal would boost U.S. growth and trade, that it would add about a third of 1 percent onto GDP over the next five years, and that it would also create about 176,000 jobs in the U.S. Wow, this might actually be a somewhat happy episode of the show. Who knew? One important thing to note before we really dive in is that, with the release of this report, we're nearing an ultimatum point for this treaty, because as of now, Congress has not yet approved it. I mean, it's only been half a year since the Canadian, Mexican, and American leaders signed the deal. At this pace, I hope we can end the US-China trade war before the inevitable heat death of the universe. This report is a key stepping stone on the way to Congress ratifying this agreement though. Because members of Congress in both chambers have said that they wanted to see this report before they scheduled hearings on the deal and before they decided how they would vote on this deal because they wanted to know what the impact would be. And certainly this would seem to support the administration's message that it would ultimately be good for the economy. And with that, let's crack this report open and see if this thing really is a good idea. The first thing that jumps out at me is, oh wow, all the numbers are going up. That's a good sign. 0.35% GDP growth for the next 6 years is a little hard to get excited about, as seemingly every newspaper made abundantly clear with their headlines. Whoa, 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 let's not try to get too sensational with this reporting. Still though, I know some politicians who would sell their left nut for a 1% increase in GDP, so 0.35% not too shabby. Furthermore, exports to both Canada and Mexico would grow faster than our imports from Canada and Mexico, something that, well, it's got positives and negatives, as we'll get into later. But that was the goal of this administration entering this negotiation, so unironically fly that mission accomplished flag. The main domestic growth comes from the manufacturing and mining industries, which should help us attain a goal of industrial de-evolution. So alright, woohoo, right? Well, for this next part, I'm going to go through the congressional debate and just see what the report has to say about it. First, according to Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the House may not vote on a new NAFTA proposal until Mexico moves forward on legislation that would protect workers' rights. Hey, at least Pelosi's pushing hard for workers' rights somewhere. This might seem like an odd and small issue for the trade deal, but it's central to all the statistics I've read to you so far. Most of the American growth comes from the automobile manufacturing sector, because in a somewhat newer strategy that have complemented our trade representative Lighthizer for in the past, rather than trying to make our workers more competitive with Mexico by lowering wages and workers' rights, we're trying to make Mexico less competitive by fighting for the rights of the Mexican working man. Who would have thought that in this crazy new world we live in, America would be fighting for socialism in Latin America? Whew, times have changed. Now this isn't a perfect solution. As this report notes, prices for all vehicles would undergo a modest increase, ranging from 0.37% for pickup trucks to 1.61% for small cars. And unfortunately, 
This would lead to a total consumption in the United States declining by over 140,000 vehicles. So more domestic jobs, woohoo! But less because we're creating new demand and more because we're just taking those jobs back. As you can imagine, this house of cards all falls apart though if Mexico doesn't raise wages. Fortunately for America, Mexico has elected leftist candidate Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador as its next president. Mexico just elected a pro-worker president. So us forcing them to increase workers' rights is like Canada forcing Trump to build a southern border wall. Okay, I ran on that, but sure, I'll still do it. Mexico is on track to pass a labor reform law by the end of this month that would overhaul the country's existing union structure. Ha! You get workers' rights. Suckers. Basically, it looks like that enforcement issue isn't going to be an issue for long because both Americans and the current Mexican administration want to see this happen. This sentiment was recently expressed by Oregon Democratic Senator Ron Wyden, pictured here trying to force choke Mitch McConnell. He's a ranking member of the Senate Committee on Finance, and after reading this, he said that this report confirms what has been clear since this deal was announced. The administration shouldn't squander the opportunity to lock in real enforceable labor standards in Mexico and fix the enforcement problems that have plagued NAFTA. Now you're probably thinking, whoop, well, that would have been helpful to mention maybe six months ago, you know, when we were actually negotiating this thing. But judging by Nancy Pelosi's refusal to sign this until Mexico passes labor laws, and I'm doing a little bit of reading between the lines here, but Democrats might be trying to leverage Congress approving this deal to get Mexico to approve these measures. I mean, when we sign on to this, those numbers go up for every country. Another similar concern is expressed hilariously by a Fox News correspondent. About the effect on the GDP, it's about point. 1-2% on the unemployment. That's like what? Two Walmarts opening over the next oh. six years? It's, <laughs> it's nothing, really. We're crowing about this? It's kind of silly. But look, any move in the positive direction on opening the Thank borders you. is going to be good regardless. Yeah, I confess. I was one of those people cooing. It's good, but let's not quit our day jobs quite yet. This brings me to one huge point in this report that not reporting on would be like talking about the cultural significance of Paris Hilton without mentioning the tape. E-commerce. If enacted, USMCA would be the first US free trade agreement to include a chapter on digital trade. And you bet that entire section was practically sponsored by Amazon. That might not sound related to the clip I just played you, but it is. In the US economy, manufacturing would experience the largest percentage gains in output, exports, wages, and employment, while in absolute terms, services would experience the largest gains in output and employment. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a downer, but a Cato Institute paper on this report makes it abundantly clear that the largest gains are expected to come from new rules regulating international data transfers and e-commerce. Of course, this isn't a bad thing, it's just, man, can we stop giving these nerds money and get some stuff going for middle America? I could go into more detail on this, but it gets very complicated very quickly. Just know that large online retailers and people who work with data across borders are celebrating right now. Those are the main breakthroughs that this report brought up as it relates to America. Now there were some other parts of this bill, like extending patent protections for big pharma companies in Mexico and Canada, but I'm running out of time and that's more of a Canada-Mexico problem. Also an oddly controversial political fight over liberalizing Canada's protection of their dairy industry. Fought milk? The interesting and encouraging takeaway from all of this is everybody seems to be talking like most people would probably agree that this is an improvement. Uh, we're finding that there are very few people that want to blow up uh, the ag agreement and go back to the old NAFTA or withdraw from NAFTA as Trump has threatened to do. That was another Democrat from Oregon. Being so Democrat from Oregon, he was wearing a purple bike pin and an orange bow tie to his interview with Bloomberg News. 
The consensus does seem to be that this is an objective improvement over old NAFTA. Except for the name, USMCA, man that does not roll off the tongue, really clings to it. What most people seem to be most worried about is, surprisingly enough, making sure that Mexico sticks to paying people more money, which for most people is a comically odd thing for the US government to be so concerned with. Anyways, yeah, it's pretty good, not gonna sensationalize it, let's just get it passed before we have all new leaders debating this thing. I mean, since this was signed, we've had a new Mexican president, a new American congress, and I'm starting to hear people express concern that congress won't have signed off on this deal by the time the Canadians have their next election in October. Basically, let's replace NAFTA before you replace everybody who negotiated new NAFTA. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.